absolutely. Um, well, it seemed a lot better idea than working to, to play sport. So um, I was I was very lucky. Sometimes uh, people have uh, a talent or a gift, and uh, it, it gets wasted. And um, I was very lucky. I had good mentors around me uh, from a very early age. Uh, I played football and cricket, and I lived for football and cricket. And uh, at 15, cricket took over. And that was my life. It was really that. That was it uh, written in. So off I went to Lords, and the rest, as they say, is history. In my opinion, I might be wrong about this. You're like the Michael Ball of musical theatre. He's managed to stick out, and everybody remembers his name as we do yours. How do you become that? The guy that people remember? Because that's personality, isn't it? That's not as much about talent, because there's some equally as good cricketers we've never heard of. And in Michael's case, there's better singers that we, we couldn't care less about. Well, we're both in the entertainment business, and I, and I think that's what it's about. Uh, I love playing cricket, and my attitude was, if I'm enjoying it, then hopefully the people who are watching are enjoying it. And that was the way I played the game. I, I tried to be aggressive. Uh, I wanted to win. Uh, I, you learn to accept defeat, but you don't have to enjoy it. And uh, I was very, very competitive. And I think that a lot of the public come along. They save a lot of money to go along to these events. And uh, I think they want to, to be entertained and they, they want to see some passion and aggression. And maybe that's what they saw. In terms of your uh, record, incredible, the highest number of wickets taken by an England bowler. Was that your proudest moment? Was that the moment when you thought, I've made it? No. No, that was the end of, that was the end of my career when that's happened. No, that's the very end. Uh, for me, the, uh, the whole point of uh, cricket for me was to play against Australia. That's, oh, I had that from a very young age when I watched Kenny Barrington as a kid playing there and immediately turned me on the way he walked out there the British Bulldog and uh, you know I've played some all the sides in the world and the greatest side of them all perhaps the West Indies well not perhaps the West Indian side uh, of the uh, what late 70s through to late 80s they were the, probably the best teams ever played but there's something special about England and Australia it's mm. the heritage it's the history uh, you know the convicts it's 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 there. It's something very. Both sides are very proud of, and it it is uh, a real um, blood and guts adventure. What does it take then to become a great cricketer? Do you need to be an all rounder? No, you just have to be quite good at what you do. I mean, Simple you, as that. Well, yeah. I mean, great cricketers: Alan Border, batsman, uh, probably one of the best of all. Um, I know nothing about cricket, sport or anything mm. and have even less interest. But what I do know is it's a very dignified sport. And that's what I love about it. Your lot drink pims uh, while sat watching. They're not punching each other in the face. It's not uh, down market like football fans and rugby fans. What's it like in the dressing room? Is it as much fun being a cricketer as it could be being a rugby player or footballer? Um, my experience, well, I wouldn't know about rugby. Uh, you'd need to ask my son about that. Uh, but... Um, <laughs> Football, uh, my experience is very limited. Cricketers, the great thing about cricket is that a lot of cricketers, uh, when they retire, and you've been in a dressing room from the age of, say, 15 to um, when you retire, which could be, say, 35, 36, 37, you retire, you know no other life. And then one of the problems is that a lot of guys retire and they don't know what to do. And we have, um, sadly, there's a lot of uh, alcoholism problems. There's a, a lot of suicide problems. Mm. And... Uh, Luckily, from my point of view, enjoyed the game, but now to work as a commentator in the game, uh, it, it continues. But I think the dressing room is crucial, and it's adapting to life after the dressing room. It's not what happens while you're there, because when you're there, it's great fun. It's uh, humour, banter, and that's what guys miss. You're so good at the commentary, but it must be a bit frustrating in a way. It can't be as much fun talking about it as it is doing it. Well, I think you have to be realistic, and I know I can't do it anymore. So I can enjoy and relish... Uh, I'm relishing watching England uh, beat Australia down under this winter. Mm. In 2007, I had to suffer all the Australian commentators gloating as they thrashed us and, and uh, regained the ashes. Well, hopefully that won't happen. England will, uh, will uh, hang on to them, will go down there and win in Australia. And it's a long time since that last happened. So I'm actually looking forward to sitting in that commentary box. In terms of my perception as a guy who knows little about anything, Freddie Flintoff seems to have done great guns for uh, the sport. Do people like him really help? Of course they do. Put bums on seats. That's what it's about. As I said at the start, entertainment uh, is the name of the game. And Fred, Fred was an entertainer. Sadly, uh, his body 
just couldn't take any more, the knees, the ankles, and he had to retire. But uh, it was just a sad day for the sport because he, he is great value. I kind of like the idea of being a, a cricketer because there seems to be a lot of standing around. How fit do you actually have to be? Oh, I think you might find you'd have to be pretty fit. Oh, that's me, me out then, is it? Okay. For, well, from the way you described yourself, but, yeah, yeah, I don't think you'd have started, to be honest, Alex. <laughs> And of course, cricket's had uh, some negative press recently with all the mm. match fixing and mm. stuff like that. Mm. That can't help. That's kind of the antithesis to what I was talking about with Freddie kind of doing gangbusters for the sport. Does that sadden you? Because it makes everybody a bit wary, doesn't it? It's It's been awful. The second half of the summer has been terrible. It's been terrible for the public. Uh, you sit at a game, which is it's expensive to go to, and then you're suddenly sitting there thinking, well, hang on, why did he do that? And why did he do that? Why did he bowl that no ball then? And it's a terrible cloud over the game at the moment. But... The great thing is the authorities have a great opportunity now to put it right. They've got a, you've got you've got the shop window series, England down in Australia, the world of cricket were watching that. And while they're watching that, they need to get on and clean up their own backyard and stop stop uh, sweeping everything under the carpet. This has been going on for a long, long time now. Stand up and sort it out. Uh, mm. Forget the politics. It's not about politics. It's about the game of cricket, which is above politics, and it's about playing the game and the integrity of the game, and also about the public who pay the money, because if they don't pay the money, there is no professional sport. How often do you get out now with the kids and uh, have a little bat around and have some fun? Uh, no. <laughs> no, because... Uh, no, uh, I have to say that um, uh, I, when I retired in 1993, uh, that was when I, retirement, when I last looked in the dictionary, means you stop. Really? Yeah, and I stopped then. But I play occasionally, very, very occasionally with my grandsons on the lawn. But uh, the problem is that I am now so awful at the game <laughs> that my uh, youngest grandson, James, actually said to my wife, Kath, one day to, when she was taking him into school, and she said, he said, was Grandad really good at cricket? And she said, yes, actually he was. Well, it's crap now. <laughs> Listen, so, this is ridiculous. I've not asked you one question. I might as well rip these notes up because it's uh, it's not happening. Will you come on again and do a proper interview with me where I can talk to you in depth? <laughs> yeah, sure. I'd no love worries. to. Thank you, Sir Ian Botham. Botham's book of the ashes is out now.